very grateful to Evan Cummings, who's the chief executive of University Hospital Morecambe Bay, to, who I'm spending some time with just now. Uh, it's a complex uh, trust. It's had uh, a difficult history. Uh, it's uh, been working on a successful improvement program and GGI work with the trust and with Aaron uh, for about a year, a little while ago. And I'm really pleased that we've got Aaron's time uh, right now to talk to us a little bit about that. So Aaron, nice to see you. So tell us about UHMBT and some of your uh, work on the improvement program. Thanks, Andrew. And thanks for the opportunity for spending some time with you. Uh, again, today, it's been a little while since we caught up, but uh, more than happy to share some of the work that we've been doing here. So, yeah, as you say, my name is Aaron Cummins. I'm the Chief Executive here at uh, University Hospitals of Morecambe Bay. Um, it is quite a complex organisation. Um, we're about £600 million turnover, just under 10,000 colleagues, uh, delivered acute and community services across North Lancashire up to South Cumbria. Um, we have three hospital sites, um, Lancaster in the south of our patch, uh, Barrow and Furness in the north of our patch, and Kendall, where I am today, at Westmoreland General Hospital. And obviously we have a number of community sites that we provide from uh, across, across Morecambe Bay. Um, you're right, our organisation's had quite a history in terms of its journey of quality and safety issues and, and improvement work uh, subsequently. And uh, when I was made chief executive here in 2018, uh, not long before the, the COVID pandemic, uh, one of the areas that I discussed with the board that required some focus of improvement was our uh, governance, assurance and risk approach as an organisation. And actually, as the pandemic transpired and we kind of led through that particular piece and, and had our CQC inspection uh, almost two years ago now, that was highlighted as an area of focus that we needed to improve when we were, um, received our, our required improvement overall rating. Now, you'll know, Andrew, that I'm a fan of good governance. Um, two small Gs, not uh, the Good Governance Institute, although I am obviously a fan of having worked with you guys before. But I describe governance in the organisation as like it's a circulatory system. Um, when it's working really well, it works almost seamlessly to make sure that Decisions are made appropriately by the right people, that risks are identified early and managed appropriately, uh, that our processes just make it really easy for people to do the right thing and very difficult to do the wrong thing. Um, and if it doesn't work effectively, those things don't happen. You can have a, an infarct or an MI and you know you, you can get into some difficulties in, in not managing those things correctly. So when we decided to kind of put some effort and focus in Kind of rewiring the organization to get its circuitry system operating more healthily uh, we made contact with you and, and the good governance institute to to provide some support for us which which probably took it was about a year actually from start to finish in terms of the work which from my perspective uh, was a little longer than i thought it, it might have taken but my reflection of that now probably a year or so after we've completed the work is that was the right approach to take um and a lot of examples, I think, of of uh, an approach that, that works for our organisation. And I'm pretty sure it would be similar for others around really understanding the current status of things, uh, talking to the organisation and the users of our governance and assurance and risk uh, systems as to what their reflections were, testing how the current system worked before kind of starting with a new one. Uh, taking some examples through of risks and issues or business cases or some board reporting and then just laying that out to say, well, actually, this is what we said, here's what we can see. Um, and it starts to get a real good conversation going, not just of what the improvements might need to be, but why it's so important to get governance assurance and risk in particular in a, in a really good and healthy place for an organisation. And, and that's the work we've um, completed with you guys, like I say, over a year ago, and we've continued to develop that work um, with the board and with the senior leadership team over the last 12 months. So one of the issues with you, it, it, it certainly wasn't that there was too little governance. Um, one, of, one of the features of your organisation uh, going back a few years was that you were um, getting interest from lots of regulators. You uh, had lots of demands for information. And um, 
I want to choose my words carefully, and you'll correct them if I've got the quite the right ones. But there was also almost a lack of confidence um, that led to um, a very overassured uh, sort of culture within the trust and um, group meetings for many things that, that didn't need them. And so a lot of the work we were doing, having understood that, was to uh, sharpen and focus the, the assurance work. Do you want to maybe describe what it felt like a bit, sort of as we were coming in at the beginning, and um, do you recognise the, the sort of syndrome I'm describing? Absolutely, yes. It's uh, It was almost a, a symptom of, of never mind the quality, feel the weight. Uh, and I think your reflection, Andrew, when you came in and reflected back to us, what you were seeing based on your experience was, um, I'll try not to mix my metaphors or analogies too much, but good governance when it's working effectively is like a well-tended garden. And what we've done over a number of years is overplanted and forgot to prune and water appropriately. Um, and it was a symptom of an organisation that had been through quite a lot of regulatory intervention and oversight. And every time there was a, um, a reflection of that or a report or a review of that kind, we established a whole new uh, oversight board or a task and finish group or a, a committee of the board to oversee particular programmes of work. Um, and when challenged or asked, or, or I was reflecting as chief executive, you know, how effective is that system? Um, we tended to respond by producing lots of information, lots of reports, lots of structures, but with very little focus on what I would call the so what. You know, it's great. You've got all the committees, you've got all the terms of reference, you've got all of the mandates from your board. But actually, in terms of what that system's designed to do, how can you demonstrate its value? You know, what's changed or improved as a result? What risks have been better managed as a result? Um, how further forward is the organisation and its strategic ambitions as a result of having this structure in place? And um, one of the lessons we've learned from that process now that we've established a, a quality governance assurance framework and a, a performance framework that's um, much leaner than we'd had previously is the importance of regularly looking at its effectiveness um, testing whether it's delivering what it should and being more open to looking outside the organization as to other examples of how things are being done or using our audit work or audit programs to point at some of the processes that um, we need that assurance that it's working effectively currently and, and for in the future. So, yeah, I would absolutely reflect on an organisation that was a bit unsure of itself, um, wanting to demonstrate as best it could that it knew what was going on and, and was managing its issues and delivering against its agendas um, as best it could. But in doing that had certainly overlaid, for me anyway, a very complex um, and resource-heavy uh, governance structure to the point where I know we did some audit work with the Governance Institute right at the start, but it was many, many, many hundreds of hours for colleagues every month to service what largely were quite duplicative meetings and agendas. And one of the benefits in having done the work, as well as being a bit more um, assured around our assurance governance and risk framework and, and testing that out with some good audit work, but the time back for colleagues um, outside of the performance assurance, governance and, and risk frameworks has allowed us to deploy some of those resources into some of the improvement work or responding to some of the operational and financial pressures a bit more uh, productively than we've been able to in the past. So one of the things I um, learned from working with you at UHMBT is um, uh, you, you had a, a almost a hyper-transparent culture uh, there, so the, the constant interventions by different regulators had had you know um, could you send me a paragraph? We've got a volume we can send you. So you you were um, hyper transparent, but the thing I learned was that um, it's not just the plumbing that you need to get right. This is a, a, an organisational development process as well. So it's getting colleagues to respect each other. Uh, understand the opportunity cost of meetings, think about their colleagues' time, understand the purpose of meetings, um, think about uh, what the point is of um, the assurance and how that links up to the board um, ultimately. So it was very much a winning of hearts and minds. It wasn't just pruning a structure 
and um, it, it it was also I remember um, important for you to explain to your external stakeholders because when you're in the state you or the stage of being inspected you were then to get across the message we're not going to spend more time on the assurance we're actually going to spend less could seem uh, as if you were complacent but you managed to um, also work with your stakeholders and get them to understand that you didn't need to set up extra things you didn't just need to attend to um, the wiring diagram you actually were going through a cultural change which was about accountability respect between colleagues um, professionalizing governance so that it I hope has more reached a stage where it's invisible yeah and again it's, it's a it's a really interesting reflection, Andrew, because as with most things in an organisation of our size and type, it's very difficult to initiate any change without it being a, an OD or a cultural intervention of the size and scale that we needed to take forward. And I need to be clear, colleagues who know me, who might be watching this now, um, they might know what's coming. Our improvement journey is not over. Uh, I'm not sure it ever is of an organisation of our, our size and type. Uh, and we are not a finished product. I think we've done some really good work over the last year or two that's been designed to address particular issues, which I'm happy to share. Uh, but there will be trusts out there that are doing this better than us that we'll learn from in the future. And we'll keep iterating kind of our improvement focus, particularly in the government's assurance and risk um, area that we're talking about today. I, I do think in setting off the programme of work, um, we, we had to find a narrative that engaged with clinical operational colleagues to get the buy-in. and. The, the big kind of messages that we took forward were around um, releasing time to care and releasing time to really focus on improvement and delivery um, to make sure that colleagues felt supported and protected and were able to work within our systems and processes, knowing that they were going to be making the right decisions or um, the infrastructure we put around uh, the improvement work allowed them to manage the risks effectively. So actually there was some real benefit in, in doing the work that we've done. But also wanting to promote that, we also went on a, um, a restructure of our strategy and operating model um, at the back end of the work you were doing with us, Andrew, and it's continued up to kind of about six to, to 12 months ago about putting patients first, um, being quality and safety driven and, and being clinically led. And to do that, you need a really good, data-driven, you know, um, a good professional performance quality assurance infrastructure that allows those strategic intentions to be driven and demonstrated. So that's a lot of the work that we've done since. Um, so it forms part of our new uh, leadership development programs. Uh, the board development program for the last 12 months has focused heavily on the development of our IPR data warehouse, the quality governance assurance framework. Um, as a tool for the board to use, not as a process or a structural change to sign off. So yeah, a lot of our leadership teams are kind of um, playing with this and developing their own use of it. And it's leading to some quite innovative improvements and changes in service as a result of operating under the new framework. So yeah, m much more than um, a wiring diagram that sits in a board paper to approve, uh, which is why I'd said on reflection, the 12 month piece of work and the approach that we took to complete um, the first part of that journey, which is the restructure and implementing new um, kind of frameworks, terms of reference meetings. That was the first part of our improvement journey and what's followed around culture, leadership development, board development is using that structure now to take the organization on. Well, it's, it, it's, it's good to hear. Um, I mean, maybe just to, to finish, um, we, uh, we, 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 we're never part of the GGI, we're never part of the permanent um, world. And I, I think that one of the things that um, I like to pride myself on is that we hand over well and we take quite a bit of attention so that we're not needed. Um, you've, you've, you've said some of that uh, just then, but um, what would you sort of look back on as to the most positive bits of this journey for you just or uh, what are you most proud of having achieved with working with us thanks andrew so 
you know, it, it was an intense time for the organisation at that period. So again, having said that our improvement journey isn't finished, I do need to recognise that our organisation is still in um, strategic oversight framework level four. Um, we've got meetings later this quarter to talk about uh, whether we've satisfied our exit criteria in, in that space. And a big part of that will be demonstrating kind of continuing the work that we'd started with the Good Governance Institute and have progressed as an organisation with kind of the board and the culture and leadership development work that I've just spoken about. Um, but there's a couple of things that I'd, I'd call out, Andrew, on that. So I think the the way that we work together to really engage with the organisation right at the start on why this was important and getting organisational buy-in with teams as to what good looks like and what um, kind of a recognition of a successful programme would look like to those colleagues who'd be using the system. That's a platform of a, a two-way conversation we've continued to use on a number of other areas, whether it's our performance and assurance framework or the way we've developed our leadership development programmes. That kind of being a listening organisation and then playing back to colleagues who've contributed is a model of change now that we've kind of adopted and, and taken forward in some of the other work that we've we've carried on. Um, and I do think the the opportunity to iterate and continue to learn together and check in with you and your team on what else is going on and other areas of improvement that we might kind of consider. So the networks that we've been able to tap into and the uh, relationships that we've built as a part of the work, again, um, they're for life, not just for, for Christmas. They're, they're, they're colleagues that we keep using now and keep going back to now as we start to talk about the improvement work we're looking at in, in the future. And I think the final kind of bit of value that um, I reflect on and, and that I'm really proud of is the um, is the discipline of being held to account by those teams that wanted to see change and improvement. Um, we kind of we've got into a, a space I think as a very senior leadership team where we're, we're just a bit more comfortable with discomfort. Um, you know, we're, we're able to have decent conversations as a leadership team um, that. Are, promoting improvements in lots of other areas for the trust. So there's quite a few things. It's not just the products that we've designed, but the way that they were developed with us has left behind a, a change in the way that our leadership teams are looking at improvements in the future. And and that can only stand us in good stead for the challenges that we're facing now. Well, thanks. Um, there's, there's a lot to learn from you, HMBT, and I, I, I commend people to look at um, um, organisations that have progressed and uh, I, I wish you well with your meetings later this, um, this quarter and hope that you'll carry on progressing and I'll, I'll see you soon. Thanks ever so much. Many thanks, Andrew.